everyone, welcome to episode two of Enforcer and the Dude. Now before we start, we can't always presume that everyone knows who we are, especially to our new viewers and our overseas viewers as well. My name's Russell Engel. In racing, I was known as the Enforcer. I'm a former supercar champion, Bathurst winner, done a lot of racing in open wheelers both here and overseas. My partner in crime, Paul the Dude Morris. Now Paul again is a multiple Bathurst winner in a lot of classes cars, including supercars as well. He is a World Stadium Super Truck winner in the US. Anything with four wheels and engine, this guy's driven it and usually is one in it. So that's who we are. The show's about bench racing. Let's get into it. Dude, the first show. Man, it just went off its brain. I can't believe the response. Um, like we, we were happy if, you know, we sort of got 20 or 30,000 views. I think that we're, was the target. Here, we got that in the first 10 minutes. Yeah, I know, we're there was here. a few phone calls that night. You were like, we're going to hit 100,000, mate. <laughs> we, we were actually phoning each other every hour going, it's up to 40,000, it's up to 50, it's up to 100,000. Like we're going, and with, with all the videos across the two platforms, it's nearly reached 200,000 views. It's a big number. That is, that is a big number. And, and it just shows that, you know, what we said right from the start, there is a niche for this sort of show. Yeah, and I think... It's proved to the numbers. We're giving the people what they want. But I, what I really loved about it, there was difference of opinion like we do and there was a difference of opinion in the comments, but there was no one slagging each other off. I think we've actually got the True. real fans that care about the sport. Yeah, because it get pretty nasty. Yeah, and we especially, didn't have any of that. Especially in social, we didn't have it, which, which means I think, well, I, I think the group that are following us and, and the ones that didn't have a voice definitely have come out and, and they are, they're about motorsport. Yeah. They're not about attacking each other. They just want best for the sport that they love. Uh, motorsport in general as well, especially supercars. So it was cool to see. Very cool to see. So thanks, fans. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're going to kick off with what we've got coming up on the show. Good. So we've got Mustang parody because we did listen to all the viewers Ooh. and we, we compiled them all up and... Uh, Julia got the great job of going through, I think it was five or 6,000 comments they went through. It could even be more than that anyway. So we compiled it on, you know, top, top to bottom on what people yep. wanted to hear. They wanted to hear more about this Mustang parody in light of what's just happened recently. <laughs> and let's just roll back the tape a little bit. Paul, he must be Nostradamus or got a crystal ball or something. Right. Let's go back to see what Paul said in the last show don't have sporting parity in, in supercars, so there's no lead in the saddlebag, it's not the Melbourne mm. Cup, they're not going to handicap him. Yeah. But I guarantee you they'll be doing some aero testing and some analysis or CFD on that car and I, I reckon it'll get its wings clipped. You reckon it will? Yep. Seriously, Paul? <laughs> had, did you know something or was that just a Well, I just opened experience. my eyes and had a look at the car, mate. That The, the Mustang's got implements on it that's outside the guidelines of that's ever been allowed before, so... It was only a matter of time before someone worked it out. So you were right on that one. Yep. I was right that the fans were going to blow up. Yep. Because they did big style. <laughs> and and, and, got, and they've got a right to it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's a second hit in as many races. Yeah. So it's a CRG, fair hit. CRG. Centre of gravity. Don't use Centre of gravity. Centre of gravity. Don't use that. But I want to highlight, mate, that yep. this is not a, a Holden or Nissan's whinging well, I no, they are. Yeah, they are. This is not a response to that. This is supercars process of, of testing aero is is flawed. And the teams have been manipulating it and getting away with, with more and more downforce. Yep. And Penske's right. just done a way better job than yeah, everyone yeah. else. And with the new two new sheriffs in town, with Adrian yep. Burgess and Campbell Little. Smart guys from race teams, lots of racing experience. They know how to push the limits themselves and have done it. So they know what to look for. Well, they've, involved, <laughs> they've been involved with some of these teams as well. Actually work for them. They're very so, high levels. You look so, at, well, and, and, so, and been involved in the, some of the homologation well, Adrian process. Adrian Burgess was team manager at, at DJR with, with James Courtney yep. when they won the championship. Yep. And now he's the guy scrutinising that team. So mm, the right guys that. are on the job. Yeah, absolutely. Right. We've got to show what they're going to do with the aero as well. Yes. Right, so let's clarify this as well because it's been just thrown out there. Oh, Mustang's going to be all cut up and yeah, run through it. In, in, actual, in actual fact, it's not as bad as what? It's not a big it's, deal. It's mate. not a big deal. Right, let's look at the wing. Right, the wing, and funny enough, this was shot here right at Norwell because this was the launch. The world's best the place to shoot. World's the best place. Um, look, when I saw this rear wing and I made fun of it 
going on a post when I first saw this, I thought they must have done the development with a sprint car team. You know, because sprint cars got those huge wings, you know, because that's what keeps them bolted to the ground. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's the thing's massive. Like seriously, when that rolled in, uh, I mean, every single comment was, "Gee, the wing looks pretty big," and it is. And that's the thing that's going to get trimmed. So first thing, Paul, is the end plates are going to get a haircut. Yep. Uh, first thing, these end plates. Tell us what these end plates do because they they protrude down the guard and they're yeah, not. Yeah, well, that's to outside the guidelines, and we've ever had before so that it's supposed to be here it's yeah when the volvo first t turned up for its first vcat test yep. it was down there and they got told to chop that off so so this is anything new this is not anything new so the volvo got, got well, hit except that the volvo never got raced like that it got stopped before it got to the track okay yeah. where well, this didn't okay yeah. so yeah. that's gone end plate smaller a uh, bit of debate over this bottom plane well wing. that's another one of the implements or tools that none of the teams have ever been able to be used before yep and that little duck bill kick on the on the rear boot lid so this is up here it actually yeah, it kicks up creates yep. downforce that's never been allowed to be used before from any other teams so the rest of the teams are yeah that's one of the things i saw flat. the car and went holy moly how have you let them do that there's another wing there's another wing on right, the car okay yeah uh top of the wing is a gurney flap which which is just basically a 90 degree yeah uh, angle and the purpose of that it artificially makes the the wing a bit longer so yep um they're going to trim that so it's only three millimeters off, off the top of that gurney. So considering that the Falcons aren't running full wing now, the information that I get, they've only been running about 12 degrees a wing. They you can, can see that, Russ. Even they can run up to Island, where, you, where you run max rear wing, yep. and you look at the look at the Mustang, they're not running max rear, rear wing. Where the Commodores are. The Commodores, Commodores are up back to it. Yeah. Again, the information I got between 17 and 19. Yeah. And you can physically just see that. So that's, you know, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to work that out. Yep. Okay, so end plates trimmed down smaller, uh, yep. gurney knocked down three millimetres, no change to that bottom plane wing. It's a weird one, but yep. I reckon that's a timing issue. Well, how, how can you remanufacture that? You can't. There's no way you could do it in between race meetings. That, that's a big job. No, no I, that's a good point because I've only had a week to really make the adjustments on these cars by the time you get back from Phillip Island, get yep. ready to go all the way over to Perth. Yep. Which brings me to another point. I reckon this kit was being sitting on the shelf. Pens Penske and Ford have uh, are happy to have this happen. <laughs> well, I didn't think anyone would be happy about getting their car chopped up. Well, no one's seen it, mate. You, if, if you take downforce off, you reduce drag and yep. you go faster in a straight line. So there's certain racetracks coming up, like Bathurst hang and Sandown. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, <laughs> hang on. Hold the horses. So you're saying to me, you're not saying this was planned. Or they had a bit in reserve, as far as aero goes. I got they got plenty in reserve. I reckon, I reckon what they've got now is probably something they thought they would have to run, or maybe even less. So, yep. a guy, a team like Penske, you got massive yep. resources around around to them. And I've got another theory about wind tunnels as well. Yeah, yeah. So, when I look at the rules about wind tunnel operation. They can put that car in a wind tunnel yep. before it's homologated. It only becomes a supercar when it's homologated. So if okay. I was them, and we know they've got a car in yep, America, yep. we know it's over there. Yep, yep, yep. They've got an aero map on that car. They would have had three or four or five, maybe six different aero configurations. They know exactly mm -hmm. what to do in it. And as soon as supercars have come and gone, you need you need okay. to do something. Right. That, they've yep, gone. Yep, yep, yep. How about we do this? Okay, but there's nothing illegal. Nothing they haven't illegal, done mate. anything illegal. No, no, so no. So they played to the rules. And I think that's a very important point. They've played to the rules with this as well. They haven't done anything illegal, no, which I think and, is why... And you wouldn't expect an organisation like that to do that. But that's why the fans are blowing up, Paul. They're blowing up because they're saying, hey, they presented a car, you signed it off, it's legal, now you're hitting it with a hammer or a hacksaw. Yeah, well, that's... That's what they're blowing up about. And, and, and it hasn't been properly relayed by supercars. It hasn't been properly um, conveyed why they're doing it. I don't believe. No, they tried right. to polish it up yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and put a bit of spin on it. But interestingly enough, that's a great picture too. <laughs> this is, and our but, friends at Speed Cafe have, uh, have donated Well, just back up a bit. Brad Jones did come out the other day. He's yep. a team owner and he's a board member, not a commission yep, member, yep, yep. a board member, which is a high level, and said the VCAT test is flawed. Okay, <laughs> so that's a team owner saying that. Yeah, right. and a now, board member. Now, now if, you, if you want any evidence of that, um, we've got the Commodore, uh, the Mustang as it currently runs. So yep. that will get a trim now, which brings it more into line with the Commodore. But the interesting part and what's been left out of this whole argument, what about the Nissan? 
It looks like it's got a couple of bits of A4 paper stuck on the side. These two are going <laughs> at each other, right? What about these guys? They've been running around for the last several years with this thing. They're not even in the same same ballpark. Yeah, well, the Nissan oh, should, the car should basically have the same downforce as the FG, not the FGX. But the, the common thing there you see, each homologation over the years, the wings are getting bigger on the car. Yep. But... The test says they've all got the same downforce. Yeah, but, yeah but, but to me, Paul, the Nissan's the only one that's played the game right. That's probably the only... Well, they haven't re-homologated a car. Well, well true. Actually, they, true. Did, they did have another go at it this year. Yeah, but the, again, it was it was probably pretty token stuff in the yeah. whole scheme of things. I mean, because when you look at that, that's pretty graphic. Like, seriously, if you looked at that, you'll go, uh, I'll take that one, thanks. I'll take the Mustang. Yeah. So why, why would you take that? So your point is, the test... Since we've had Car of the Future, yep. they're all meant to have the same downforce. Yes. And when you look at the cars, and then when you've driven them, you've driven them, you get them and they've got more downforce, but they're not meant to. And, and, <laughs> I've, got, and I've got a theory behind all of this as well. Okay, it's and it's been backed up by other people that I've spoken to, that I reckon because the process that supercars have been using for homologation, they've been hot rodding the system, when I say hot rodding, not illegal, they haven't been cheating, not illegal, but, but finding ways around the test that they do, which is just an aero test, up and down a drag strip, uh, an aeroplane field at a certain yeah, speed limit, yep. uh, run down tests, so they coast down as well, taking measurements and laser pointers and all the rest of it, you pointed out to me. Yep. Um, I, I reckon because they've been hot rodding it, with the, the homologation teams, process, the teams, yeah, yeah with, with the cars, that all of a sudden they reckon there's nearly 30% more downforce in the current cars to when Car of the Future first initially yeah, came that's out. Wrong. That's another subject. We're going to hold a new show on that. Oh, I know, but you don't want more downforce in these cars. More downforce produces worse racing. Think of F1. What are F1 trying to do at the moment? Pull all the wings off the things. Off. Pull the downforce so you don't have to have artificial passing with DRS and all this sort of things, fake passing. Like seriously, more downforce um, ruins the quality of racing. And, and that's been tried and tested throughout the world. That, that's a known fact. So if they've got 30% more downforce because they keep, people keep pushing the mark up, bad news for racing. I mean, th think of some of the events like, I was watching a 04 and 05 Pukekohe race. You know, seriously good racing. Like, the race was a burster. Murph was out front, you know, and that's when he was the queen of Pukekohe and winning all yeah, the races. You, you, the you racing up and down the, the field. The hill flat, could you? No, no way. <laughs> People were hanging on to it. They're going yeah, to the yeah. corners, trying to gather it all up. Yeah. Uh, it was such good racing, and I think that quality of racing has been lost, and no one even knows it. They're, they're because, because they've gradually been stepping the mark up. The cars are easier to drive. Um, look at Bathurst. You made a point about Bathurst. Oh, you just... You, you were lucky to survive McPhillan Park each time he went through it and get the courage again to go up, up the top and across the top again. Now it looks pretty cruisy. Yeah, well, I'm sure they're still pushing on, but just do the lap times for McLaughlin to do a 203 in there as well. Yeah. This all of a sudden hasn't picked up that much mechanical grip and that much horsepower from there, like, seriously. And, and you can't say, yeah, he's the track's a good, got a little better, yeah, but not that much. No, nah, but he's a good steerer. But hey, there was good steerers in the early days too. Yep. You can't take it away from them as well. But you're right. Every lap of Bathurst was a mission. Um, so it's like I said, because the system been hot rodded. I, I really hope, like I said, the two new sheriffs in town with supercars, um, they're finding loopholes. So uh, it can only be better for the racing. Um, so what? Where do we go from here? What is what? What happens for the Mustang from now on? Well, they're going to take more measurements. So the homologation and the CAD drawing of all the cars are being given to supercars. They will have that. Now what they've done is uh, CFD. So they've scanned, supercars are now scanned all the cars. Computational fluid dynamics. Yes, that's what it is. <laughs> so um, so a, a, a computer wind tunnel. Yeah, and there'll be a lot of analysis going on. And it's, this is not going to happen in a week. There's a lot of analysis and data to go through. Yep. And they'll just measure all the cars and keep measuring them. And the Holden might even get a bit of a haircut as well. Yep. Or, or they might give the Nissan a leg up or they might... Get, so, but, but until it's you measure point. it properly... It's a, it's a good point with the Holden because, remember, that got weight added too, which means last year's homologation wasn't on the money either. No. With no. the ZB. But I think the ZB's got a deficiency in the front. Yep. It's probably got a bit, bit too much rear than front when you look at it on the yep. racetrack and yep. the way yep. they drive it. Yep. So that okay. could get a leg up in the front. I don't know. They're going to measure it. And, but don't be surprised if there's more adjustments and more, and more cuts. 
Bad move. Bad move if they give the Mustang any more of a hit. I reckon you made your bed, you lie in it. That's the decision. They stretched the rules from here to the US. There's no doubt about Supercars, that. Supercars, you mean? No, Wait. no. But Penske have with the mulligation. Well, they're just playing by the rule book, mate. I know. Well, the I know. Book. I know. He's the master of they're, interpreting the rule book, mate. They've stretched it out. I didn't, yeah, say, they're I didn't say they've done anything illegal. But, okay. but for me, they've just stretched the but rules. That's their job. To the, that's their job. <laughs> exactly right. But don't give it any more of a haircut. That's it. They've done the t they've done the two of them. That's it. If they if they give it any more of a hit, it's a bad look for the sport. I wouldn't be worried about getting a hit, mate, because it's going to make that thing faster. You come Bathurst yep. and you pull it. What do you do? You yep. trim the car out. Yeah. You trim so, the so car you're, out. So you're saying it's not going to hurt them. No way. But you're saying they're going to get more of a haircut. I, I wouldn't okay. be surprised. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised because you can't crunch all the numbers on okay. the CFD all within right. a week. Yeah. You couldn't manufacture all those parts within a week. I reckon yep. that kit's okay. sitting on the shelf. All right. I reckon Pepsi, yep. you got I, an aero map. I, I, I reckon they're way ahead of supercars, and supercars are playing catch up. Could, couldn't agree more. Don't give the don't give the Mustang any more of it. They made the bed line it. They have to put up with it for the rest of the year. They've had a swing at it. Sort the things out behind the scenes, and then get on with it. There's my curse. Now, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I reckon anyway. I, I just reckon it's a bad look for the sport. So let's wrap this up. At the end of the day, I reckon supercars have made their bed line it at the end of the day uh, they've had two swings at the mustang leave it alone not a good look for the category um, and f and spend the rest of the time and resources in fixing the homologation process and getting the scrutiny of the cars better put your time and effort into that and leave the mustang alone just get on with racing yeah but what if they do find there's another difference do they you're just saying just let that go well, the whole well, basis well, of hey, the whole hey. basis of the category, mate, is, is technical parity. So if the new sheriffs are in town and they find another difference, you reckon they should just cop no, it? No, not on. Uh, yeah, but hang on. What about if other teams haven't done that in the past with a homologation? I don't know. They've got. A, they, they've run the whole year. I do know one thing. It's yep. it's not a good look. No, and, it's not and a good it's, look. It's, supercars have done a really bad job of explaining to their fans what's going on. Yeah, fill the fans <laughs> in. Don't treat them as idiots. Like they actually yeah. want to know. Just make it simple and easy. Don't hide the fact. Like just get out and put it out there. And the good thing for the Ford fans, yep. I reckon the car will be quicker at Bathurst. Okay. And the other good thing about it, it's going to be um, on Free to Air TV. The race this weekend it at is. Perth. Yep, for sure. So there's plenty of good stuff going on. Yep. Totally agree. Okay. Yep. Now we got to get into our centre of gravity test because this is a very, very technical test as well. Um, it, it's fraught with danger. It is. <laughs> it is for you. Um, well, you've built and designed the test car, so I'm a I bit did. worried. For this time, I'm the engineer <laughs> driver. So let's get into it because this is really going to explain centre of the gravity the best way that you've ever heard of and seen. So let's get on to it and uh, have a bit of fun. Mate, no expense better or enforcer right. than the dude show. We got, we got the big missive here. Missy Mr. Ban. Yeah. Now we're going to do the centre of gravity test, right? Yep. Uh, so you got the short straw. You're driving the rig. You're the test driver. No worries. You're right. So yep. you're, you're up for it. Yeah, I'm right. up for it. Okay. So what we're going to do? We're going to do a base run, couple of laps around the skid bowl here at Norwell Motorplex, right? Yep. Get a feel of it. See what the see what the feel of the van's like and and what it's like with no weight in it. Now we've got a pole going through the middle. We're going to gradually add weight, like they did with the Mustang and the Commodore, just to see the effect. So we'll gradually keep putting it up, and yep. then you do a few test laps. Give us your feedback on it as well. Okay. See what you feel like. And that way we can explain to all the viewers what centre of gravity is all about in layman's terms, oh, in real right. term. You're an ideas man. Right? I'm an ideas <laughs> man. Right, load up. Uh, okay. Safety first. Got the safety viz on. I'm good. Right, put the helmet on. Let's get going. Let's get the test up and run them. Well, Paul, this is it. Baseline run. Go out there, do a few laps, get your eye in before we add the weight, all right? Okay, so mate. 40 to 45 kilometres an hour. Hit it, get your eye in, then come back. We'll start loading her up. Copy. Cheers, buddy. Okay, dude, take her up to about 40 to 45, all right? And Paul's just building up speed now, getting a feel of the lean of the van, just to get a baseline run before we add the weights. How's she feeling, Paul? Yeah, good, mate. 42, 42 is the max. Okay, dude, uh, you got your eye in all right? 
Yeah, mate, started shoving the nose around 40, 42, and just started to tip, I reckon, 30 in the roof, like they did to the Mustang. Okay, we'll put 30, to ki that. Okay, 30 kilos in and go out and do another run and see how that feels. So that's the same as what they've put in the Mustang, or near enough. Yeah, is there a reason why the belt's in here? <laughs> no, mate, no, no, <laughs> oh, okay. no, no, we're just concerned for your safety. <laughs> Okay, dude, test two. We've got 30 kilos on the roof, all right? So go out, do a few laps around the uh, around the skid pan, see how it feels. Tell us uh, how much different it is. I've got you, mate. Okay, let's go. So don't forget, Paul, build her up to about 40, 45 kilometers an hour, same as before. You can definitely see it leaning over more. See so it's starting to tilt. That's only 30 kilograms already, it's starting to look unstable. Look how much lean it's got on it. What do you reckon, mate? Knock 4K out of it. Oh, really? Yeah, it can just get like 38, 30. So it's not four to five kilometres an hour, the yeah, speed out of it, because yeah. of the lean over. Yeah. All right, mate, let's go for the next one. Let's okay. put the big one, 120, right at the top. Okay. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, Paul, this is the important one. Test three, 120 kilos what? on top of the roof. Oh, you stacked it up a bit, did you? Yeah, we stacked it up a little yeah. bit. So, mate, uh, same deal again. Get as fast as you can and give us some feedback on how it feels. We've gone extreme, but, mate, you're an extreme sort of guy. Right on. Okay, launch into it. I'm so glad it's him in the van and not me. I'll give it a strong tip. Let's see what this, this could go really bad. You alright, dude? Yeah, pretty good, mate. <laughs> Not too bad, eh? You okay? Yeah. <laughs> Just like stadium truck racing. <laughs> that was out of control. He's alright, everyone. He's alright. How good was that? Uh, hang on. Can we get the door open? Yeah. Alright. Good, mate. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> Good job, dude. Good job. Pretty good, eh, mate? <laughs> do, do the celebration, dude. <laughs> nice work, dude. Nice work. Pretty good, eh? Well, if that doesn't explain COG. No, nothing does. Centre of gravity, nothing will. Amazing. <laughs> Just 120 kilograms tipped a van on its side, seriously. Unbelievable. So, it is unbelievable. <laughs> You're a legend, mate. You're a legend. Nice work. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, you don't get any more graphic than that. Pretty wild, eh? You're out of control, dude. Oh, Ser right. Seriously, if that doesn't explain <laughs> centre of gravity, nothing will. That that was that was very cool. And uh, unfortunately, uh, Todd Wanless uh, from Royal Metal Corp, who's our official um, bang Best him up car supplier, <laughs> he yeah. might have to crush that one. I think he is. Seriously, but uh, yeah, thanks to Todd too. We're going to need a few more cars. I we think. will. We've got some cool stuff planned for later <laughs> down the road. Yeah. Now let's have a look at some fan comments because. Yeah. It's been pretty cool, the response to everything. Yeah, we got that one up on the screen up there from yep. Steve Lamb. Yep. Responding to Tim Witteman. So we got some in interaction. He said, well said. Lots of the fans, just not the Ford fans are upset. Unbelievable. A Holden fan sticking up for a Ford fan. I've never seen that before on social media. No, it just shows that the real fans are, can work out that yeah, the yeah, issue's yeah. not with the teams, it's, it's the supercars problem. But there's been plenty more as well. Yeah, plenty more. Let's have a look at another one. Oh, Tim, oh, this is responding to that. So I'm a Triple Eight supporter, but supercars 
just unleashed a complete cluster. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> really? It's tainted the championship and it's unheard of doing this during the season when the COG, the wind tunnel testing should have all been done prior to Adelaide. So that's, we didn't do the wind tunnel test. Yep. For to build a good mousetrap within the rules. And in my view, it's the rules that are wrong and that are not tight enough. Right. He's nailed it, nailed it. Well, well funny <laughs> enough, it's exactly what we've been saying. Yeah. You know, I've probably been a bit stronger on it than you have because you're coming from a, you know, because you've been a team owner yep. point of view. But, but like I said, I reckon the, what he said is exactly right. They've done it, put up with it. And again, Jamie Miller, ha ha, not just the Ford fans, Russ. I support Holden, but on this matter, I'm with Ford. Just one after the other. I've, like I said before, I've never seen a Holden supporter go, go on the Ford side, I can tell you. Mark Thistlewaite is another one. Is it possible for you guys to find out how supercars tested for this exchange, for the change yep. and explain why? If the Mustang is supposed to have an aero advantage, how it come to, doesn't have the track record on the aero on track? Yep. So he's talking about lap time right, at okay. Phillip Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If the Mustang's so good, why didn't it, why didn't it blaze the lap record? Well, exactly. and And... Something that we explained in the last show as well, um, the Triple Eight cars were actually up to half a second slower at Phillip Island this year than when they were last year. So I reckon you've got to take that into account a little bit as well. That it wasn't just a Mustang looking good, some yeah. of the Holdens were actually slower There's than There's been a CAG adjustment too, yep. and we don't know what yeah, the yeah. CAG was of yeah. the yep. FGX last year as well. Exactly right. And then you yep. have weather conditions and a few other things, but it's a good point. Absolutely. Now we've had a lot of comments about super utes. Yep. As well, which is good. So that's why we talked about it. Because again, we're, we're going to talk about subjects that you requested uh, and a bit a lot about super utes. Yeah, um, so Andrew Huffman. Oh, awesome show, Paul and Russ. Um, how long you. do you think the, <laughs> the Ute series is, will last in its current form? And is there a way to improve it and make it more exciting? So it leads us into super utes. It does. Now, super utes, I, I, I see a post go up that they've actually <laughs> talking about... They've C made a, C a, C a C centre of gravity adjustment Centre of gravity adjustment. They had to roll 600 of them for it to happen. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> they've, they've dropped the utes down finely and it actually looks a lot better. The utes look... And they're going to handle so much better. But again, it's like... You know, I, I look at this whole that to talk about parity and homologation. This was something that supercars were involved in. Maybe you should start rethinking about whether supercars need to be stepping back from this whole homologation thing with categories. Because seriously, like when I first saw the, uh, I think it was Townsville where they launched it, the Utes, they just looked like normal roadies as far as ride height goes. They yeah. actually looked like they had a lift kit in them. Well, who in their right mind thought, yep, well, that's going to handle really well? Well, you had commercial guys making technical decisions. Yep. So Never going to work. Yeah, they wanted them high off the ground. They wanted to, wanted to get the aftermarket suppliers in. They wanted, there's a lot of commercial money came in around those yep, utes. Yep. And I think that tainted the design of the race car because you ended up with something that looks like it should be off-road. And then they've tried to modify that. So they've taken the commercial side of it too far. It's commercially, it's been very successful. Oh, oh yeah, but they've taken yeah. it too far as going, oh, well, that's why they drive on the road, so we'll, we'll just make it into a race car exactly how it is on the road. do not work that well, way. Well, if you racing. did that, it would have been fine. But where they really went wrong is... They not, at that, not at that ride height. Not at that ride height, no. They're going to fall over. You know? And they do. Yeah, well, you, you jack your car up 50 mil over the ride height on the road, the cops pull you over because it's dangerous. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, they had a big blitz on that. That's right. That last so, year. you know, the same thing's happening here and yep. finally they've, they've, they've lowered the car. But where this car went wrong is they tried to get technical parity among the brands. Pretty hard, different Pretty engines. Pretty hard to do with a road car when you're modifying a road car. They well, should car, have... engine, different capacities. Yeah. So from the, from the flywheel back, Yep. All of those cars are the same. They've got the same gearbox, which is basically a Commodore gearbox that was in the old ute. Yep. Different tail, tail shaft, common rear end that you bolt in the car. So you end up with this very expensive kit, probably another fifty to $60,000 you've got to buy, then yep. install, and it's just fundamentally flawed. Okay, big question is, can it be saved? No. It can't, you don't reckon it can be saved at all? Not in its current... Cause, because so it's not fit for purpose, Russ. A lot of team owners and drivers that invested a lot of money won't be happy about that. No, they, they, they shouldn't be happy, but... So is this something that supercars need to, to look into and, and compensate I, these teams? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't think you can fix what they've got because basically what you've got... The Ute is not a unibody car. It has a chassis with the body yep. bolted on top. Yep. And they built, mm. the, built the race car the wrong way. Yep. Normally the roll yep, cage yep, structure okay. would go on the chassis, yep. which is like car of the future. 
and then your panels will go around the outside. So, but now when you have a crash, you ding the body up, you put a new body on your chassis, you've got to throw all your roll cage away. So a simple crash becomes a thirty, forty thousand dollar problem. Right. So, so not only is the performance side of it, it's also the logistics and actually running the things is expensive as well. Very expensive. Yeah. 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 Okay. The next, uh, we've had a lot of uh, comments about uh, stadium super trucks. Now, even though um, there was quite a big blow up last year about stadium trucks, and they got they stopped them from racing here in Australia, which again yep. the fans blew up about. Didn't they blow up? Big style. Uh, you may have, well, I don't know what you can and can't say, but you may have some potential news yeah, about there, that. Yeah, there is, there is talks. I've spoken to Robbie, Robbie Gordon and his representatives. Uh, they're working through a process now with, with CAMS uh, to try and review and, and, and get them back on track. And I think this is a case that the promoters need them. Oh, it's, it's, <laughs> look, I can tell you firsthand, like seriously, like that, that really surprised me when they, when they come up with all these, and they, look, and I know who the people were in the background that were whinging and moaning about these people in influ influential positions who probably should keep their mouth shut well, because, probably... because I race the things. And, when I, and I even thought, geez, these things are pretty out of control. I race the damn things, right? Yep. And, when, and, and Sydney, you invited me and uh, it was some of the best racing I've ever done. I never at any stage, even though launching over those ramps, I'd never done it before. At any stage, I felt like I was going to die or, or going to crash. Or the, 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 the trucks are designed to do that job it's and they do it purpose. so well. Yeah. Racing was fantastic. You're competing against people that are uh, seriously good racers as well. They're not donkeys. Like they, they know what they're doing. I never at any stage, and I got thrown at the deep end, did I feel out of control. All I felt was I had a bloody good time. It's probably one of the best race cars I've ever driven. And yep. the thing that's so good about it is you get out of the, you, you get out of the, you come fourth or fifth. I've never seen you so happy to come fifth in a car race <laughs> in your right. life. Yeah, couldn't you, agree you more. you jump out of the truck and yep. There's, yep. there's 10 or 15 kids yep. deep yep. wanting to see what you've got. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's a great way of engaging youth into into the sport yeah. and getting people into the track. Yeah. Um, oh, it's just mate, it's just a great spectacle. They're great guys. Robbie Gordon's the best showman I've ever seen. He's probably seen. a bit loose for, for and I think this is where I mean, Robbie's Robbie's his own guy and he's a bit flamboyant and a bit loose and he probably doesn't fit the cams model. Yeah. Probably a bit like you yeah, and I, me. I can tell you about that. Yeah. Yeah. And if you get on the wrong side of these guys, they'll they'll run you out of town. Yeah, but don't take <laughs> it's not about personality. No. It's about the sport. And the sport is so good. I've never seen Robbie Gordon at Eastern Crow. He was the greatest showman, inviting kids in. And, yeah. and so it was nothing was off limits. Well, you sit in the truck, get in the truck. Do whatever you want. Do you know, you get photos. <laughs> He's so good for the sport and it's he such is. a good spectacle. And I really hope they mend their bridges and see sense in this and actually say, hey, the crowd loves it. It's a great spectacle. Like, seriously, just forget the... Per it's not about personality. It's about the show. About the show should never ever be forgotten. So, I really hope they um, they sort sort it out and so get back on I. track. So do I, because then I can go racing again. <laughs> Don't forget me. We'll do it <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll have another spin at it. Hey, um, we always like to throw a bit of motorbikes because we're a big motorbike fan here. Yep. And uh, I had lunch with oh, we had Stephanie Sheen, Barry, oh, yeah. the yeah, late great Barry Sheen. Barry. He helped you out a lot. Yep, didn't yep. You? Barry was, was great. We we both loved him. Well, everyone has. I mean, Jesus, we talk about commentators seriously one of the best entertaining guys on tv as far as motorsport goes and a hell of a bike rider as well uh stephanie said that um and, and unbeknownst uh, barry has um all his bikes he has won from every bike of championships that he's won and competed in and yep. it's been in his house, in his house at yeah. carrara yeah. um a fantastic display like and, and a lot of them are one-offs no more left. That is the only one left in the world. And there it is. Um, they're actually being packed up, crated up as we speak, ready to be sent to the UK uh, for the NEC uh, Birmingham uh, oh, motor, motor show. show. It's a bit like the, a bit like the, the uh, exhibition. Yeah, exhibition show. Yeah, yeah. Um, a bit like SEMA. In, yep. In, um, yep. Big show. Uh, in America. Yeah, big show. So it's sort of... It's, it's a bit unfortunate. It's a bit of a sad time as well because, you know, it's the last bit of Barry leaving Australia. You know what I mean? Um, because his bikes were so, so iconic and, and I sat there many times just looking at him going, holy hell, sit on him. And you think, man, these guys must have been lunatics to ride these things. I mean, they were just time bombs. 
And uh, unfortunately, so that part of Barry Sheen's leaving the country to go back to UK. Great for everyone in the UK. Get to see these bikes as well uh, on display at NEC. Then there's a new museum being built at Silverston, a new motoring museum. They're actually going to be housed there. So very, very cool. Uh, like I said, sad day that we see them go, but really good for UK. And uh, they're on their way. So a bit of motoring history. And we've got one of Baz's helmets sitting here with Steph loaned us to pretty put cool. on display. Pretty it's pretty cool, it's pretty cool. yeah, absolutely. So uh, yeah, so that's a bit of motorbike news. Now, the announcement of a great new segment. And again, this is what you guys have asked for because we want to spread the love here as much as we can. We've got the grassroots racing section. Yeah, we got a lot Say of Say that comments, after a few beers. A lot of comments talk about grassroots racing. Yep. That's where I started my racing career. I actually didn't go through carts, the normal process. So I started speedway racing and I started Gemini yep. racing. Gemini's? Yeah, which yep. is a one make series. Yep. So we've chosen to highlight Hyundai XL racing. I know, yeah. Yeah. So Great. We, um, a big, big, I, I see they've got um, actually ser um, state series. Yeah, all so the way now. Pretty well throughout Australia. Yeah, so the, it started up here in Queensland yep. racing and then it, it grew from state to state. And basically, you've got a race car you can build for about eight thousand dollars. <laughs> Pretty, Pretty good. Pretty um, good. And race it competitively. There's massive cars in, in uh, grids of cars in each state. Yep. They're getting bigger and bigger. And uh, their their jewel in the crown is is the Bathurst race, which they've just had at Easter, supporting the, the six hour, so fifty five car grid. Fifty five. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> that is incredible. Yeah, that's that's got, a lot of cars here. But there's, there's some there's some good people involved in this. You know. I see Cam Wilson, who's a local hotshot, and being involved in, in racing Queensland and, and at a very high level yep. is in there, right down to the kids out of go-karts. Um, that Asher Johnson from South Australia, he won, won all the races. He won the, okay, so he, oh, yeah, he had three wins. It was Jordan Creaser. I don't know whether that's any relation of. Um, that could be. It could be. Um, yeah. Michael Clement. And Nathan Blight as well. Yeah. They were all podium Brett getters. Paris, the, and yeah. if you look through that was at the six hour, by the way. Yeah, that, fifty-five race. car grid, two races, and fifty-five at Bath. <laughs> Seriously. And you've got to earn your way to get there by yep. by scoring high points in, in your state championship, which is Pretty recognised cool. by CAMS. Fantastic CAMS for supporting this this yep. grassroots category. Yep, and yep. There's fantastic. A, there's a familiar name down here, mate, in position thirty-nine. Yep. Gil Slade, which is Tim's, any relation? Tim Slade's dad. Oh, really? Yeah. So uh, that's pretty cool. And if you follow Gil, he's a ripper, ripper guy, but he's been to Bathurst all his life and, and he's finally got to race there. And he, he would never have had an opportunity to do that Absolutely. without a category Couldn't like this. So more. you've got you know, different different people yep. getting involved in this and it's, it's what we need. Well, what a great starter, though. What a great for someone starting out, whether you're just having a bit of fun or want to actually get experience. And you race at all the tracks where the big boys race too. Uh, you so do. That's a good thing about it. And oh, I just reckon it's a great... And to have that many cars around Bathurst, the race would have been... Out of control. Like it would have been such a good race, but. Uh, I wonder if we can get an invitation. Invitational, yeah, it'd be yeah. good. Yeah. But a Asher Johnson, three wins. Um, I think we should be seeing a parody adjustment. <laughs> a parody, parody, mate. I'm three, sure all these three guys wins. Are anything, but look, Les mate, Smalls, maybe, Les Smalls <laughs> Performance Motors. There's a guy that's built Bathurst winning engines for, for Alan Grice. Yeah. One of Australia's best touring car builders, and he, he's in the Honda XL series, so that. <laughs> the people are into it. They're, yeah, they're having yeah. a good time. Yeah, no, that, I reckon that's great. So that's that's our very first segment, and uh, and like I said, we're going to be giving a love, a bit of love to all these because that's what it's all about. We, yeah. should, we need to get it sponsored by Victor or something, don't we? Grassroots we, racing. We do, mate. Victor or Greenfield Mowers. Yeah, or they used to be involved well, in let's racing. Give them a call. Yeah. But the thing about this grassroots racing and racing at this level, you're learning your mistakes, and it's not costing you a fortune. Yep. And Couldn't agree more. And if you can get to the front of any of these one make series and run up the top, you know you've done your job. You know you've done your job, and yep. then you can go to go to the next yep. level. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't agree more. Yeah, yep. very good. So anyway, so we've given you some love there, Hyundai XL yep. series. So uh, XL well done, Cup. XL right Cup. So <laughs> mate, that's it. That was the whole show. It was it was a lot packed in there, I know. But like I said, the Mustang parody thing took a bit of explaining to get it right because there was a lot of a uh, lot that people didn't understand. So I hope we've explained it better. Um, now. We've listened to, again, I keep harping on about this, but it is important listening to the comments. We are going to plan on having a future audience, so stay tuned for that. Uh, 
We're just we're doing getting, like, a big enough theatre. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it looks <laughs> like <laughs> people wanted to come. <laughs> it looks like it looks like there might be a few coming because people come here just to get a, a photo in the studio. Now they come to Norwell Motorplex, you know, and go, "Oh, is that where it's filmed?" And it's, that's that's pretty cool. So we're planning is, on that. We have had a live track here today too. Absolutely, yeah. You, you might have heard the cars running around as well, as well, because yeah, th this track is used you know, seven days a week as well. So, so, but that's what's cool about it. We don't have to be super quiet. It is a, a live racetrack as well. Uh, well, testing track. Um, we're planning on a guest as well. So if you've listened to you, a lot of people said, let's get a guest in here. We're planning on someone very, very special, hopefully for our next episode for the third show. And if we get him, it's going to be explosive. Get ready. He's going to be a hand grenade. Pin will be out. Look out. So uh, that'll be pretty cool. And every guest is going to do a little bit of a challenge as well that we've designed, which is going to be pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's everything. So we've got a lot planned, a lot going on. We're going to keep stepping the show up every time. And, keep uh, the comments coming. Keep the comments coming in, and we'll do our best to, to answer them. Uh, Ford fans, don't deject. No, we're, no, we're, we're, we're reckon they we're reckon they're on the go. coming up. Yep, absolutely. Right to end the show, we've got the Jerry Springer segment. Ta da! Dude's life message. That's how we're always going to finish this show. Take it away, dude. This is an oldie, but a goldie. Okay, go. Measure twice. Yep. Cut once. Okay. <laughs> it's sort of more for the tradies out there. I got no, to tell it's you. It's more huh? for supercars. Ah, <laughs> nice. Okay. Cut. Measure twice. Measure twice. Cut, cut once. Okay. <laughs> Take <Don't, don't laughs> note. I, th I think the new sheriffs and supercars have taken note of that one. That is a good one. Thank you very much for uh, for being here once again. Make sure you come back. We're actually going to put some little small videos on in between too. So keep checking our uh, YouTube channel. We've got a dedicated YouTube uh, channel for this, Enforcer and the Dude. Make sure you hook onto that as well. Subscribe, more importantly. And uh, yeah, we're going to see you back in a couple of weeks' time. That's what we're planning. Every fortnight, hopefully, we're going to be bringing this show. So we're stepping it up and we're coming at you. So thanks for being for coming. We're out. We're gone. You, you're out the door. See you next time. Cheers, guys. <laughs>